Ready to dive into something every online business owner, or really anyone even thinking about selling online, needs to know. Let's do it. Today, we're talking about understanding your audience and how that can seriously boost those e-commerce sales. It's huge, right? Like in the online world, you're not dealing with a physical storefront. Exactly. No window displays or fancy signs. You need something else to grab attention, and that's where really getting your audience comes in. Absolutely. We're not just talking demographics here, right? Right. We found this article, Boost Sales by Understanding Your Brand's Audience. And it goes deep on this idea of a buyer persona. You familiar with well, that? Oh, no, yeah. Think of it like this, a buyer persona. It's basically a detailed profile of your dream customer. Hmm. You're going beyond those basic demographics to figure out their motivations. Okay, so it's like getting inside their heads a little. Exactly. What are their pain points? What do they aspire to? It's about understanding what makes them tick, what makes them click that buy now button. I like that. Makes them tick, makes them click. Uh -huh. So how do we go from this vague idea of who our customer might be to this detailed persona? Well, the article actually tells a really interesting story about this doll retailer in Tokyo. It really highlights this. Oh, I love a good story. Tell me more. So they're selling dolls, right? They just assume their audience is kids. Makes sense, right? Seems logical. But then they dig a little deeper, and boy, were they in for a surprise. Okay, now I'm really curious. Who was actually buying these dolls? It turned out their biggest customer base, it was actually women in their 30s. Drawn to the artistry, the nostalgia, the whole story behind these dolls. Wow. So they weren't buying just a toy. They were buying a feeling, a memory. Exactly. It's like they were buying a piece of their childhood. Imagine if they'd gone ahead with that kid-focused marketing campaign. Total miss. And that's exactly why understanding your audience is so crucial. Data is key. Data-driven insights, my friend. It's not just about assumptions anymore. So how do we gather that data? The article mentions a bunch of research methods like detective work to uncover this hidden information. It can be fun. We start with the basics, though. No, Demographics, no. those are still important. Right. Age, location, that kind of thing. The foundation. Exactly. But to build a truly in-depth buyer persona, we need to go deeper. Deeper. Or need psychographics. What are their hobbies? I see. What are their values? What kind of lifestyle are they into or aspire to? So are we talking about understanding if they'd be more into, say, a vintage record player or like the latest noise canceling headphones. Exactly. And then on top of all that, we got to figure out their pain points. What are they struggling with? Because if you can solve their problem, you've got a customer. If your product, your message can offer a solution to their frustration, that's when the magic happens. OK, this is starting to make a lot of sense. We're not just selling a thing. It's more than that. It's about fulfilling a need, a desire. But how do we actually gather all this info about our audience? Do we need to become mind readers? Well, that would be a cool superpower. But luckily, there are more practical ways. The article talks about surveys and interviews. Straightforward enough. Just ask people what they want. It's a little more nuanced than that. Oh, how so? You have to craft those questions carefully. Don't just ask, what do you like about our product? OK. What kind of questions should we be asking then? Try asking, what's your biggest frustration when it comes to, and then fill in the blank, whatever product category you're in. Ah, I see. So instead of making them come up with reasons why they should like our product. Exactly. You're getting them to articulate their needs, their pain points in their own words. Makes sense. So what else can we do besides surveys and interviews? Customer reviews. Those are pure gold. Oh, for sure. I spend way too much time reading those anyway. See? Market research. Pay close attention to the language they use, the features they rave about, the things they wish were different. And not just our own reviews, right? Exactly. Check out what people are saying about the competition, too. It's like free intel. Think of it like putting together a little witch guide, but for your ideal customer. I like that. The more we understand their lingo, how they talk about their needs, the better we can connect with them. So we're building a connection by using their language, showing yeah. them we get it. Exactly. And don't forget about social media. It's a gold mine. Oh, yeah. People share everything online. X, Reddit, you name it. It's all out there. It's like this giant focus group happening 24-7. You can learn so much about what your audience cares about, what they're buying, just by listening in. It's true. I'm always amazed at what people share. Like, sometimes I feel like I know more about people online than I do about my own neighbors. Right. 
But it's a good thing, at least for us marketers. It gives us real insights. Totally. But we're not trying to be creepy or manipulative. Right. Absolutely not. We're not trying to exploit anyone or anything like that. It's about understanding, not tricking people into buying something they don't need. Exactly. Speaking of understanding, the article also talks about competitor analysis. Oh, right. We touched on that a bit with the reviews. Mm. But this is bigger, right? Yeah, it's more about looking at the whole picture. How are your competitors positioning themselves? Okay, so like, what's their vibe? What kind of image are they projecting? Exactly. What language are they using to attract customers? What are they doing well? And what could they be doing better? So we're not just copying them, but learning from what they're doing. Exactly. It's about identifying opportunities. Where can you stand out? What can you offer that they don't? So it's like getting a free masterclass in e-commerce, but from your competitors. Love that. And once you've gathered all this info, you get to put it into action. The fun part, we've done our detective work, built our buyer persona, we know our audience. Mm -hmm. But how do we translate that into actual words, copy, that makes people want to buy? That's a million dollar question, right? The article actually gives some really solid advice on that. And it all starts with speaking their language. So. Not literally. Right. right. Well, unless you're dealing with a global audience and need multiple languages on your website. True. But I meant more like figuratively speaking their language. Exactly. Use language that they connect with. Their jargon, their slang, their level of formality. So like going back to those dolls we talked about. Yeah. We wouldn't use super technical terms or anything. Right. It would be about evoking those feelings of nostalgia, of artistry. You're speaking to the heart, not just the head. I'm getting it. Create that emotional connection. You got it. It's like that saying, people don't buy what you do, they buy why you do it. Oh, I've heard that. So it's about the feeling they get. It's about connecting with their values, their aspirations. So it's not just about describing the product itself, but the benefit it gives them, the experience. Exactly. Features tell, benefits sell, right? Instead of just saying, this camera has a 100x zoom, you'd say. Capture those once in a lifetime moments in stunning detail, even from a distance. There you go. You're painting a picture, tapping into their desires. I see. And that takes us to storytelling, which I love. Okay. But how do we actually use that in product descriptions? You don't need to write a novel, but you do need to weave a narrative. Help them see how this product fits into their life. So like, instead of just listing the features of a fitness tracker, we tell a story about someone who used it to get in shape. Now you're getting it. Make the product a part of their story. So it's all about making that connection. Exactly. You're not just selling a product, you're selling a feeling, an aspiration. It's giving them a glimpse into a better version of themselves. Exactly. And when you can do that, when you can tack into those desires, those aspirations, you're creating a connection that goes way beyond just listing features. Remember, people buy based on emotion and then use logic to justify it. Oh, that's so true. I do that all the time. Yeah. I totally needed those shoes. We've all been there. But that's why it's so important to get that emotional response. If your audience feels something when they connect with your brand, you're already halfway to making that sale. Wow. This has been seriously eye-opening. We've covered so much ground. Understanding your customer, how to research them, how to write copy that converts. It's a lot to take in, mm. but it all comes back to that one crucial thing, understanding your audience. It's the secret ingredient. That's what makes or breaks you in the e-commerce world. Couldn't have said it better myself. Because it's not just about selling a product, it's about building a connection. Absolutely. You wanna offer something that truly resonates with them, that makes them think, yeah, they get me. Like we were saying earlier, sometimes it's even about tapping into those hidden desires, the things the customer themselves might not even realize they want. Right, and that's where things get really interesting when you can unearth those needs and then show how your product fulfills them. Powerful stuff. So for everyone listening, here's something to think about as you go about your day. Pay attention to the marketing that works on you. I love that. What really grabs your attention makes you want to find out more. Chances are it's because that message is speaking directly to you, to your needs, your desires. And what resonates with you as a consumer can also inspire you as an entrepreneur. Absolutely. The best marketers are always paying attention. So stay curious, friends, yeah. and keep those conversions coming. That's a wrap on another deep dive. Until next time. See you next time. Remember, the best insights are often hiding in plain sight. Keep your eyes open. And your ears perked? And your mind curious?